Hi there, I'm Katherine Given, Senior Style and Market Editor at Lux Interiors and Design Magazine. I am so proud to say Lux is celebrating Black History Month and we're showcasing some amazing Black artisans and makers. So thank you so much for tuning into Design TV, where today I'm chatting with Nana Quaygrain, uh, the founder and CEO of 54 Kibo, which is an online platform uh, that shares and sells contemporary African design, making handcrafted pieces by talented artisans available globally. Hi, Nana. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Thank Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. This is great. Thank you so much. So I know that, you know, 54 Kibo does does so much more than what I just mentioned. But before we dive into chatting, I'd love to give our viewers just a, a brief background on you. So you were born in Ghana uh, and raised mm -hmm. in South Africa. Yes. Uh, before moving to the US to attend Harvard Business School mm -hmm. and eventually starting, you know, 54 Q Kibo. But you've had such a broad range of careers from metallurgical engineering and strategy consulting in South Africa and Botswana to investment banking at Goldman Sachs in New York mm -hmm. and managing an infrastructure fund on behalf of South Africans public pension fund. Mm -hmm. So clearly, Nana, you've had, you know, a lot of varied career and life experiences. So, you know, what led you to start 54 Kibo? Um, <laughs> th 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 thank you again. You know, uh, I think there's always the, the sort of commercial part of the brain, right? And they'll, they're looking for the opportunity and the mission part of the brain. And there's always the personal side. Certainly. On the commercial side, it just seems to be sitting there, you know, there, as, a, as I was uh, doing my work, going to all these, the countries in Africa looking for investment opportunities, which are really focused on infrastructure, transportation, mm -hmm. uh, telecommunications. Um, I also notice you also see the design around you, right? People come into your offices and they dress the setting where you go into office buildings, you see the furniture. Uh, and so it was just pretty clear that there, these talented designers in Africa uh, that are making beautiful pieces but every time I would land in New York, I really wouldn't see them. There wasn't one single place that curated it all. You really have to work hard, go to like 10 stores to find what you need. And so that was it. They, these talented designers, they're in Africa, but they don't have access to the US market. So let's build it. That, that, that is the commercial side of my brain. <laughs> the, the, the personal side of it is uh, around that time. Also, I had my twins, you know, uh, it's actually their birthday today, if you can believe it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so they just had four. Uh, the, you know, they were born uh, in, in Ghana. You have a naming ceremony for them. So my parents came down to Brooklyn um, you know, and as we were just the festivities of the day, everything, all our friends coming and um, just there was such joy that day that I wanted to bottle it up for them, <laughs> both for them and to share with the world. And, and, um, and so, you know, as I looked at them and I look at these blank slates that I've brought into the world and I wanted them to have a connection to Africa, to learn about Africa. So Nana, tell us just a little bit, just to backtrack for a second, you know, yes. sort of about the mission, sort of the model and how it works, how, you know, how you work mm -hmm. with sort of these very talented artisans. Um, yeah. The mission really is share contemporary African design. There are billion people, 1.2 billion people in Africa, you know, and 200 million in the diaspora and they making things. Uh, and as I sit in, in New York, I'm like, Someone in New York is not getting access to the creativity of 1.2 billion people. That seems, you know, seems uh, like there's something huge missing there. Missing, um, right. And so it's it was really, you know, uh, we started by finding the designers, really starting to curate the pieces. Uh, we, you know, we launched we launched November 2018. I 
started research in around October. By November 2018, we launched the business, so we're two years into it now. We decided pretty early that we're only going to be online uh, because we really wanted to test the market and understand maybe there was something that we're missing. Maybe people weren't interested in this stuff. So online was the best way to really get the data as quickly as possible. Um, we focus on, it's everything for the home. So lighting, wall art, um, you know, tabletop, furniture. It's really whatever you need to, to, um, to decorate your home, right? Um, and so, yeah, yeah. I feel like, I'm, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. you, you work with so many amazing artisans. Um, yeah. You know, for our viewers, you have to check out this platform. It's so inspiring. But I do just want to shift gears for a second and... Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned uh, several techniques in African design um, that many of, you know, the artists that you work with focus on, including woodworking, weaving, goldsmithing, you know, very, um, you know, technical, you know, and detailed, um, you know, forms of art. So mm -hmm. I just, you know, can you, can you share a little bit about some of the makers um, at 54 Cubo who are working with, with these techniques? Mm -hmm. uh, I thought the one thing, you know, I, I get that question a lot. And as I think about it, also to mm -hmm. just even educate myself. The one thing is that African design, these techniques, are uh, just global design techniques, right? The 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 goldsmithing, the metal working, the woodworking. That's all I could, you know, that's just global design. And so the question then is how is African design different? You know, and so the, the specific techniques within woodworking, the specific techniques within weaving, the specific mm -hmm. technique within goldsmithing, and the meaning behind you know, the products that are made or the, the, the cultural moments that drive the creator, you know, the artist to create that piece in that time is really what distinguishes it. Uh, at least that's, 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 you know, some of the insights that I've getting <laughs> so far. And, and so, you know, when you look at textile weaving, you know, that's probably the, the, one of the pillars that I look into really deeply is it's not, something that's happened in the 1900s, you know, Ethiopia started growing cotton in the first century, you know, the 11th century, you had textile, the strip textile weaving in, in Ghana and in Ivory Coast, all along the west, uh, west coast of Africa, uh, the indigo dyeing pits in Nigeria wow. you know, have been there forever and they're still there now, you know, we, we see a lot of indigo dyed cloths in the US now, but it's, mm -hmm. it's centuries old. Um, and so we, we use that to guide us, but it's not really, we're not trying to look at history and just be like, oh, that's so great. It's what, right. what are the creators using now to make the stuff that's exciting today? It's interesting, I guess, I guess every region. So, you know, when I think about the textile, probably one of the pieces or, or weaving specifically that the modern gesture pendant lighting, for example, um, you know, that's probably one of our top sellers. And when I hear people talk about it, they just haven't seen a shape like that. They haven't seen the shape with the weaving like that. Uh, and yet I saw that piece and I was like, that has to be South African. When I saw it first online, I was like, that has to be South African. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, it's very, I could see then Debele, you know, rings in it. Um, and so when I spoke to the, art, the the maker, the designer, and she was like, you know, this is what inspired us. I just thought we needed to have this piece. Woodworking uh, with Tekura in Ghana. It's a family owned business. Uh, the mother and father started it. The, the twin daughters are actually now running the business. Oh, I love that. Uh, and and they, you know, they take reclaimed wood from Ghana's the forest in Accra and so on. Um, you know, I've actually been to the operations and you, you see, you know, everything laid out, the, the, the man working, the, you know, sanding it down, making sure it's painted, um, you know, correctly, all the, the assessment that goes into it. Um, and it actually, you know, that's probably the one, it's, it's so difficult to describe a piece, right? You see the drum shape yeah, of the table. Yeah. Yeah. But let me read you this. You can decide to include it or not. But this is probably my favorite review ever. From This is also from a, a man, which is not typical for a customer base. you know. And he wrote this review. He got that table. He's like, I love this side table. 
it's high quality, which is why I spent this much on side table. It's one of those tables, which isn't just a table, but also an art piece. It's also beautiful. I love to run my hands over it, feel its smoothness, the strength of the wood, the smell, the scent of freshly cut timber. I couldn't believe I could still smell it, considering that it's obviously been cut and treated and shaped into a table and transported across multiple geographical boundaries. But yep, I can smell the fresh timber. <laughs> I, I look at this table from across the room in the same way I love looking at beautiful art. Oh. It's very existence in my space, brings me a small sense of joy and beauty. And yes, it's functional, sturdy, no wobbling. I what go at you? Oh. Yeah, like 1 a.m. one day when, you know, it's just one of those days when you need a little push and it came through. I was like, okay, let's keep going. Yeah. Oh, I love hearing that. And then yeah. go um, goldsmithing. I, I'm such a fan of Lisa Hunt's artwork, but yeah. I know you have a few artisans that also work with this. Yeah, so we've got Fatih Lee in Senegal who works with ceramics um, and you know, uses gold as the accent uh, on, on her ceramic plates. And really the significance of it, part of the, the reason I also like to connect Lisa and Fat, Fatih in my head is that you know, gold is so important, uh, especially in West Africa. If you look at Ghana, it was the Gold Coast right? It was the right. world's oh, yeah. producer of gold at, at one point, still a significant producer. Um, you needed to own a gold piece. I actually brought, you know, this is from my, my grandmother. Oh, you know, the pieces that you would just get as part of your, you'd be given. And, you know, and I guess growing up, I actually didn't appreciate it at much because it's, it's just a piece. Yeah, you know, but of course, <laughs> uh, now I, as, as, as I'm also understanding that a lot of, you know, there's the heritage that comes into it, the stories, the design, why it was, has to be this shape, what, what you use it for. Um, and so that's what Fatih is transferring um, into her ceramic plates. But then I had that same story as I was speaking to Lisa and I understand why she uses gold in her motifs. You know, her grandmother wearing the gold bangles in the Caribbean. She would hear, you know, feel the, the jingles of the, the bangles. And, she said, you know, even in the U.S., as she thinks about memories, it's really embedded. So, you know, that, that's the theme that, we, again, we, we, we try to carry through. Um, and, and the other part, which is sort of a theme that carries across, is actually the sustainability piece. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything, and, and I guess the world is still trying to figure out, you know, what is sustainability? There's so many definitions and so on. Broadly, there are three themes, right? You have to think about the economic part, which is very easy for us in the US. All businesses have to be profitable. Yes. <laughs> uh, you think about the environment is the second pillar. And you think about the community, the social piece. Those three anchors are the anchors of sustainability. Uh, and so thinking about the impact on, you know, are you paying your workers well? Is, is, you know, is it an ethical business? Is it mm -hmm. you know, something that's, are you using, you know, locally sourced materials? Are you flat packing your items so that when you're shipping them across all these oceans to bring them here, um, you know, so it's, it's there's that element I find when I speak to artisans and, and makers and designers in Nigeria, or I speak to them in South Africa or someone in Malawi or Zimbabwe, it's the same, they get it, you know? And, and, um, and so something that we also want to, you know, keep highlighting and keep showcasing, especially since it's in line with broader design themes right now. Yeah, I hear you. That is such an important yeah. part now of design or just of a business in general, right? Sustainability and that aspect. So Nana, can you tell us what's next for 54 Kibo? Well, I guess what's next really is, um, you know, when I, okay, well, I guess when I think about the milestones, one, one of the things we've created is the Wikipedia for African design. What's next is we, we've got a new collection. Thank you so much, you know, for, for sharing these, these very talented artisans with us. And they're really such truly beautiful works of art um, that they're creating. And, and as you mentioned, you know, they're really, they're rooted in history, they're rooted in craftsmanship. And, you know, I, I'm so impressed by all that you're doing to sort of 
preserve African design and sort of bring it forward. Um, so, so thank you, thank you for that. Um, and, and thank you for being here today and talking a little bit more about, about 54 Cubo. It was a great discussion and to our viewers, stay tuned for what's next on Design TV and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.